For some legal analysis, criminal defense attorney Jessa Nicholson joins us now. She is not involved in this case. <laughs> Jessa, great to see you. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for I'm your help today. Happy to be a spectator. <laughs> this is a high-profile homicide trial. Brooks faces life in prison if he's convicted. So why did the judge grant him permission to defend himself? Well, we all have a constitutional right to represent ourselves. Um, sometimes exercising your constitutional rights is not a good idea, but he does have that right in assuming that he met the standard of being competent to represent himself, which this judge did a colloquy and made a finding he is. He's able to exercise that like any other citizen. If he takes the stand, can he cross-examine himself? Well, he can't cross-examine himself and he can't direct himself either. So what that'll be is, we call it testifying in the narrative. Um, so someone gets up, they tell their version of events. He will be subject to cross-examination if he chooses to testify in that format. And then for the redirect examination, he would get to talk again. But will, since he's acting as his own attorney, will, he'll, will he be able to question families of the victims if they're called to testify? Yes, he will. Um, so he retains the right of confrontation and the right to cross-examine witnesses when he's acting as his own counsel. The judge keeps referring to Illinois versus Allen. What is that? Illinois versus Allen is a 1970s Supreme Court case that outlines when in very egregious circumstances like this, a defendant's own bad behavior can cause partial forfeitures of certain rights. So how, how, can, can, she, how can she control him? Well, she can't. I think that's pretty clear, and I don't think anyone could. That's not a critique on the judge. But she has options under the Illinois v. Allen case. She could gag him physically. I would suggest that what we've seen is kind of the modern-day equivalent of that. We've got him, you know, on a recording in another room with a sign. She could find him in contempt of court. She's already made a record that she's disinclined to do that. Um, and she could remove him from the proceedings completely, However, that becomes more challenging because he is representing himself. So whenever he is completely removed, he necessarily can't exercise those constitutional rights to cross-examine. In the 18 years that you've been practicing law, have you ever seen anything like this? No, and I've been standby counsel in a couple of cases um, with people who are pretty adamant about their view of the way that proceedings should go. Um, Mr. Brooks has made some references to being what we call a sovereign citizen. It's this kind of fringe legal theory. Uh, you know, those tend to be pretty disruptive defendants, but this is really a whole different level. What, what effect does this have on the jury, do you think? Well, I imagine that most of the jurors are probably thinking one of two things. They're either thinking this guy is intentionally doing this to cause a mistrial and disrupt it, or they're concerned about his mental health. Can you see this going forward? Yeah, what's, what's going to happen next? It, is it going to be an automatic appeal? I have to assume that there's going to be an appeal in this case. It seems like everything this defendant is doing is trying to, number one, cause a mistrial at the trial level, and number two, create as much of a mess of a record for the appeal as possible. Well, he's doing a good job at it. He, he is trying mightily. And I think the judge is doing her level best to maintain calm and demeanor in the courtroom. This is a hard, you know, it's a hard trial to watch for those of us who are in courtrooms every day because you want to see justice be done and have someone have a fair trial. But just like the holding in Illinois v. Allen says, there are limits to that that can be pushed with just absolutely out of line behavior. And you've been before this judge. She can handle this, you think? I do. I believe that. She's a former criminal defense attorney, so she's got a lot of experience in the, the realm of criminal defendants and their behaviors. She's an experienced judge on the bench. She's the chief judge there, I believe. Um, so I, I think that she's got all of the qualifications to steer the ship to the extent that it can be steered. We'll keep watching. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll have you back, I'm sure. It. Yeah, Jessa, thank you so much. Jessa, good, good to job, see you. Thank you.